I was rubbing my stomach, which was naturally aching after delivering twins by C-section. I was trembling with anger in the car, right after I left the hospital. Come on, it's a day to remember. Let's celebrate the birth of a mom of two. You've been taking it easy in the hospital, you should move your body a little. It's hard to put off the weight you've gained, isn't it? Why does this man think that a body of a woman who has had her stomach cut open fully recover in just a few days? And why does this man always decide things on his own without consulting me? Oh, that's right, he's crazy. So I wanted to talk to you about something. When I heard the words that came out of my husband's mouth after this, and when I learned what the mom of two really meant, something snapped inside me. My name is Seima, 32 years old. I'm a housewife who works part-time at a nearby supermarket. When I first got married, I thought that children would come naturally. However, it seems that my body has difficulty conceiving, so I started treatment when I was 30 years old. The side effects began to make me sick, so in order to focus, I originally worked full-time as an office worker, but resigned a short time after treatment began. The treatment was difficult at times, but my husband Vicente supported me through it. I am now pregnant with a child I have dreamed of for so long. To my surprise, I found out that we were having twins. In contrast to my joy, something worrisome happened soon after I became pregnant. What? Is Aurelia coming back? Unlike my stern face, my husband told to me one day without changing his expression. Aurelia was my husband's childhood friend. I had met for once at the wedding. I heard that their houses were close, and she and my husband grew up together like siblings. However, I only remembered her as an insane woman. It was on the day of the wedding. I was nervous in the waiting room when Aurelia and my parents-in-law appeared out of the blue and said, Anything you don't understand about Vicente, you can ask me. I know Vicente better than anyone else. I had never met Aurelia before, so it was only natural to think, Who is this person? My head was in turmoil. Well, it's nice to meet you. I smiled bitterly and glanced at my mother-in-law for help. My mother-in-law seems to have noticed my glance. I will introduce her to you. This is Vicente's childhood friend, Aurelia. Childhood friend? Why did they bring a childhood friend into the waiting room? I didn't understand the behavior of the in-laws. But I didn't understand Aurelia either. Oh, I see. Hi, I'm Emma. And don't worry, I will ask Vicente himself about what I don't know about him. I smiled back at her, as her face twitched. At that time, I had thought Aurelia had feelings for my husband, so I was determined not to get defeated. But soon, I was told that Aurelia was married, and all I could think was that she was a strange woman. My husband apologized quite a bit after the wedding, but it didn't fix my mood for a while. Thus. My memories of the wedding were made unpleasant by this woman. Fortunately, Aurelia was living far away from us because of her husband's war, so I was truly relieved. However, she was now coming back to her hometown because of her husband's job transfer. To be honest, I was not in the least bit happy about it. My husband and I had rented a house near my parents in Lowe's house. It seems that Raleigh and her husband also rented a place near her parents' house, so we were to be neighbors. Why did they go through that trouble? I was disappointed, but Aurelia's attitude toward me was surprising. I'm sorry about what I said at the wedding. Vicente told me you were pregnant. Congratulations. I envy you. I'm going through some treatments too, but it's not easy. I looked at the Ralia, a little downcast, and recalled myself in the past. Well, it was impossible for me not to see Aurelia and her husband at all. In Elton, Aurelia's husband seemed like a very nice man. Aurelia seems to love her husband. 
and there seems to be nothing going on between her and Vicente. Still, the bad memories of the wedding will never disappear. Time can't be turned back. I would ostensibly talk to Aurelia, but I had no intention of opening up to her at all. Meanwhile, the twins were growing well, and my husband was doing a great job with the housework. I'm sure having twins will be very difficult. I'm worried about your body, but I hope you give birth to healthy twins. He also worried about my health like that too. Aurelia was a housewife, so she often visited her parents' home, and even my in-laws' home, though she was merely a childhood friend. She never came to our house, but I did not feel very happy about it when I met her at my in-laws' house. When Aurelia was not there, I asked my mother-in-law. I feel Aurelia is too close to Vicente for a childhood friend. Do they used to date or something? My husband denied it, but I was running all along. My mother-in-law looked at me with a puzzled look on her face. Those two? That would never happen. Aurelia's parents both worked, so she used to come over to our house a lot. That's why she doesn't know how to be reserved at our place. From your point of view, I understand you don't feel good about her, but our family can shoo her away. I couldn't help but wonder why my mother-in-law sighed as she said this. Toward the end of the pregnancy, we found out that the twins were girls. Let's go shopping for all the baby stuff on our next day off. My husband was in a good mood, and I was happy and looking forward to it too. But on the day, those two instantly erased these feelings. When I got out of the car and headed toward the entrance of the store. Hey, I'm here. I'm so tired of waiting for you. There was Aurelia, smiling and waving at us. What? Why stay here? Sorry we're late. It's just that the road was so crowded. My husband, who was standing next to me, called out to Aurelia as if he were a matter of course. My husband had arranged to meet up with Aurelia without consulting me. It didn't make sense to me, and of course, it made me angry. I have to go to the restroom. After Aurelia left, I asked, Hey, why is Aurelia here? I thought we were going to buy stuff for our babies, just the two of us. Why would you do something so selfish? I was so frustrated that I have tears in my eyes. And yet, my husband replied. She says she wants to buy baby stuff too. She's got good taste, so she would be able to pick out something much better than me. I know you're suspicious of us, but we really don't have that kind of a relationship. I'm sure you understand that Aurelia is a nice person if you get to know her. I felt nothing but discomfort, who didn't think anything of this situation. Baby stuff. Is Aurelia pregnant too? I haven't heard anything about it. My husband looked aghast at my words and continued. Oh yeah, she wants to buy something for her future baby. Soon after, Aurelia came back. I glared to her from behind as she and my husband strolled into the store. As you can expect, shopping was not fun at all. I'm not feeling well, so I'm going to sit over there. I said, and sat down on a bench alone. I saw them shopping happily, and started to feel sick, even though my morning sickness should have stopped. What is with them? Are they really just childhood friends? It surely doesn't look like it. I didn't want to be annoyed but their presence was just increasing my stress level. Then, I delivered my twin daughters safely by sea scam as planned. My husband cried and he rejoiced, and my parents in Inglos upon receiving the call from me, thanked me. On the day I was discharged from the hospital, my husband came to pick me up. The plan that we discussed was for him to take me back to my parents' house, but the car was going in the opposite direction. Where are you taking me? I asked my husband as I looked at the scenery outside. Um, can we stop by at our house? 
I've absolutely prepared something for you. I've been budding my parents in Doralia. So let's celebrate. I was nonplussed by my husband's word. I can't. You have to take me to my parents' house right now. My body isn't at its best, and it's hard for me to even sit down like this. I've got my stomach open, you know. If you want, I can show you the wound. Are you trying to have a party or something? Are you crazy? My husband said, miffed at my attitude, raised his voice. Come on, it's a day to remember. Let's celebrate the birth of a mom of two. You have been taking it easy in the hospital. You should newbie your body a little. It's hard to put off the weight you've gained, isn't it? This caused my daughters to start crying at the same time. My husband looked at them through the mirror. Poor babies. Look, they are crying. We are almost home, so we should take a rest, and then we will go to your parents' house. That sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, it must be hard to take care of twins, right? So I wanted to talk to you about something. I honestly don't remember much of what happened next. All I remember is that my body was trembling with anger toward my husband. That's it. That's how far out of the known my husband's words were. When we arrived home, my parents in Lo and Aralia were already waiting outside. As soon as she opened the car door and saw the girls, Aralia said, Emma, you are being so mean to me by refusing my visitation. Hmm, which one should I choose? I slapped Aralia's hand vigorously as she tried to touch my daughter's. What are you doing, you little prick? She glared at me. My precious daughters are about to be kidnapped by a strange woman. Where is the mother who doesn't protect her daughters in such a situation? Don't you dare touch my daughters. I held my hands out, as if to guard them. What kidnapping? That doesn't sound good. I just thought it must be hard for you to take care of both of them, so I take one of them for you. Hey, Vicente, I thought you already talked about it. I glared at Vicente. I did tell her, but Emma doesn't want to. I'm sorry, Oralia, but you have to give up. I'm sure that one day a baby will come to you if you keep up with your treatment. He said to Oralia calmly. But this woman is actually crazy. It's too late now. I'm ready to raise a baby. And I put all the stuff due. If you're saying you don't want to, then pay me for the cost. She shouted. I began to feel the eyes of the neighbors looking at us, wondering what we were arguing about. My mother-in-law sensed this and said, Aurelia, I'm sorry. Please go home for the time being. Raising a child is hard work. Emma might change her mind. But... I continued to watch the conversation between my mother-in-law and Aurelia with cold eyes. She might change her mind? Not in a million years? Aurelia? Does Elton know about this? Aurelia's face turned pale at my words. I won't forgive you if you say anything to my husband. You're so arrogant just because you became pregnant. You have two children now. Why can't you give me one of them? She rounded and raved. Don't be ridiculous. What are my daughters to you? You think I'm just going to give you one of them like a cat or a dog? Of course not. Are you stupid? Don't take me for a fool. All of you. I glared at Oralia, Vicente, and my in-laws with all the hatred I could. I pulled up my phone out of my pocket. Can you pick me up soon? Thanks. I told the person on the other end of the line. Hey, who are you going? Vicente asked, but I ignored him. In a few minutes, Aurelia's husband Elton arrived. Why? This isn't what you think it is? Aurelia clearly becomes impatient. We can talk about what I think when we get back. Come on, let's go. With a stunned face, he took Aurelia home. I had exchanged contact information with Eltham not long ago. He also seems to suspect an affair between them as I did. Also, 
because Aralia started to buy things for babies, he thought that she might be pregnant with Vicente's child. We asked the detective to investigate, but the only result was that the two were just friends. Then we began to suspect something else. Aralia was talking over the phone yesterday, and it was probably Vicente. I heard a voice saying something about one of the tweets. I don't want to think so, but... We only found out about the plant the day before the bars. I told the hospital that I want to refuse to see anyone but my parents out of fear. Also, I proceeded to prepare for divorce, which I had been thinking about for a long time. If there is not enough evidence, it is meaningless. I wanted to get the divorce in my favor. So I intentionally kept my husband in the bar. I wanted to talk to you about something. I was thinking, maybe Aurelia could raise one of the two. It will be easier for you, and Aurelia would be happy too. I think it would make everyone happy. I was able to record my husband's unbelievable suggestion in the car. I immediately sent a message to my parents asking them to pick me up. From then on, I kept Elton on the phone. They had no idea what I was doing, and they were all willingly saying that they were accomplices. Did they really think I would accept such an impossible proposal? My parents arrived shortly thereafter. As soon as they got out of the car, my father grabbed my husband. You. My mother and I desperately tried to stop my father from getting emotional. Dad, it's okay. He's not worth it. Let the lawyer take care of the rest. My father calmed down at my words. Yes, you were right. I'm sorry. Let's go home now. Today is the last time we will see these guys. I nodded to my father's word. Then Vicente said, Lawyer? The last time? Are we getting divorced? Why? We ended up not giving up our daughter, and I feel bad for the girls if they don't have a father. And there's no way you can live on your part-time income. As if taking advantage of my ranting husband, my mother-in-law follows. Yes, and I want to see my grandchildren too. Please don't decide everything on your own. We will raise our grandchildren as a family. My mother-in-law said something incomprehensible. I take a deep breath. I don't understand why you think we can still live together without getting a divorce after such an incident. I don't intend to do so. Besides, you were the one who gave up your daughter first. Are you stupid? When your daughters grow up and have children, if her husband and his family were to take them away from you, to give them to someone else because they feel sorry for her. As a father, would you be able to say that it can't be helped and hand them over? I don't think so. The look on my face at that time was so powerful that neither my husband nor my parents-in-law could say anything. My mother held me as I wavered and said, Don't you ever come near my daughter and granddaughter's gate. Next time, I recall the place without Marcy. Vicente's father is a teacher, right? Why did your son grow up to be such a punk? It's a small town, and now, with all this attention, I hope they won't be any of strange rumors. My mother sneakered softly. If that happened, I'm finished. My father-in-law fell to his knees, and my mother-in-law turned pale. It's your fault, Vicente. If only you hadn't done that to Aurelia so long ago. My mother-in-law's anger was directed at my husband. But to me, it didn't matter. Emma, what are you going to do with all the baby stuff Aurelia bought? My husband asked in a pathetic voice. You two bought all that stuff on your own, and I don't think it's any good. I don't need any of that stuff. I took my time and chose everything online, and have already placed it all at my parents' house. You have nothing to worry about. You can call my lawyer for anything else. I smiled, and my husband broke down in tears. After that, my husband and I got a divorce, although it took a while. In the end, there was no romantic relationship between my husband and Aurelia. I found out that Aurelia, 
who was unable to get pregnant, asked to be thanked his parents to help her with this horrible plan. But why wasn't my ex-parenting law able to decline Oralia? The reason for this is apparently that in the past, my husband had carelessly injured Oralia, to the extent that she was left with a scar. They felt guilty about that and couldn't resist her. Furthermore, I learned that Oralia had been demanding money regularly from Vicente and his parents, calling it medical expenses. It seems that Oralia's husband and Oralia's parents did not know about this, and we also found out the shocking truth. The scar had healed to the point where it was difficult to tell where they were. As soon as my experiencing Lo found out about this, they turned the tables and filed the lawsuits against Oralia. They claimed alimony, but Oralia's parents seemed to be sensible people, and they disowned Oralia who cried and begged them to help her, there was little evidence of the attempted kidnapping, and I could not give them any criminal punishment for it. However, Aurelia's husband and I have both been emotionally distressed because of this incident, and we filed a claim for compensation for mental anguish against them. My experiencing law shifted the blame to Aurelia. Aurelia said, I was the one who was mentally deranged, it was hard when my husband kept talking about our future child. I would take a psychiatric evaluation or anything. Elton, however, was happy with his life with Aurelia. After he became suspicious about her relationship with my ex-husband, he regularly recorded their conversations. It's your fault we can't have children. You're useless. She often shouted at him. They say you lose your shape after childbirth and her C-section leaves scars. I'm glad I was able to have a child without having to go through the pain. Elton had successfully recorded her phone call with my ex-husband. With these as evidence, Elton and I were victorious. The reason for Ralia wanting a child was because she didn't want to feel like she was losing to everyone around her. I was disgusted by such a self-centered reason. I don't want a woman like that to become a mother for the rest of her life. Maybe it is true that babies choose their mothers from the sky. That's what I thought to myself. As my mother said, rumors spread. Parents of my ex-father-in-law's students began to call the school to inquire about him. He eventually became neurotic and locked himself in at home. My ex-mother-in-law is a housewife so the family's income was cut off. They apparently didn't have much saved up either. So now, the family of three seems to be living a simple life. My ex-husband seems to be living under shame, now that his friends and co-workers found out about the incident. I hope he regrets his actions for the rest of his life. As for me, I'm busy taking care of my daughters every day. Thanks to the support of my parents, I'm getting by. When I contacted the company I used to work for, I was told that they would be waiting for me to come back anytime. You never know what life has in store for you. But I feel happy with the life I have now. As I watched my daughter sleeping peacefully in the same position, as if in synchronization with each other, I vowed to be a strong mother.